Did God really say that you should sell it all and parachute in? Did God really say that you should be a pastor? Did God really say that you should serve on the team and serve the pastor that you're serving right now? Did God really say that you should be here at this conference? Admiration turns to comparison. Comparison turns to a lack of self-confidence because we allow the devil to whisper those four words. Did God really say? Hey, listen, there are four words that change the course of human history. Now, before we get to those words, let me ask you this question. Have you ever been around people in ministry that you admired? Especially in settings like this. You admire their resolve. You admire the way they deal with conflict. You admire the way they preach without notes. You you admire the way they've grown their church. You admire the way they lead their team. You even admire the way that individuals gravitate towards that person in the hallway. Now, if we're not careful, that admiration turns to a lack of self-confidence. And we begin to think thoughts like, I can't do what they do. I don't have that gift. I don't have that type of mindset. I don't have that type of ability. And we question our call because of the thoughts that we allow to run through our mind. Now, in a room full of pastors, I need a good story. I need a good hook because everyone loves a good story. Everyone loves something with philosophy. Everyone loves something with deep thought, something that will move you to tears Maybe a story of romance and friendship, a story that's mixed with a little bit of adventure, a little bit of suspense. So this morning, I thought we would talk about Toy Story 4. Listen, it's past the statute of limitations. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to talk about it anyway. Plus, I have two beautiful redheaded girls at home, Piper and Harlow, and they absolutely love this movie. Side note, where's my girl dads in the room? Girl dads? Hey. I am convinced it's our duty just to stay out of prison as long as we can. A couple weeks ago, I about dropped kicked a five-year-old messing with my daughter, and I didn't care what the consequences were going to be. Let, let me get back to Toy Story. So Andy has been replaced by Bonnie, and Bonnie has all the original toys. She has Woody, she has Buzz, she has Slinky Dog, she has Rex, but Bonnie goes to kindergarten and she actually makes this toy named Forky. And Forky is made out of this sport and some pipe cleaner made with these googly eyes. And, and, and what Bonnie does, she snaps this uh, popsicle stick in half just to give him feet. Now when Forky comes home, Woody introduces him to all the other toys, but the only word that Forky knows is trash. And the only place that Forky wants to be is is in the trash can. See, Bonnie made him a toy, but he called himself trash. He thought he was no good. He thought he didn't belong. See, when admiration turns to a lack of self-confidence, we internally call ourselves trash. But there's there's this step in between. And the step is called comparison. And it looks like this. We have admiration and that turns to comparison and comparison turns to a lack of self-confidence and no one is exempt. And then we live our lives as if we're forky. We show up to conference as if we're forky, like we don't belong with everyone else. That all we'll ever be is trash. But Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 says this, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. At Multiply Church, we say it this way, don't talk about it, be about it. Don't talk about hope and live a a trash-filled, hopeless life. Listen, there's always someone that shows up to a conference like this feeling like they don't belong. And we saw it in the video that kicked off conference. You see friendships and you're envious. You see churches coming with their entire teams and you and your spouse are doing the very best you can just to keep your head above water. You're actually dreading every single meal time because all you really want is for someone to grab you, to sit down with you, to have a meaningful conversation. You show up with a chip on your shoulder. You show up weary and doubtful, you show up beat up and you show up stressed. You show up feeling like Forky, thinking that you're trash. Now hear me. It's okay to show up that way. It's not okay to leave that way. It's okay to show up with your junk. If the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, then let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. 
I've watched all the clips that CMN put out inviting people to come to conference because we're like-minded. We want community. We want to leave better than we came. Pastor Jeffrey Portman, you've imparted something in my life that you said many years ago, IGYB. It's I got your back. It's not IGYB, W-T-A-E, I got your back when things are easy. It's I-G-Y-B. So let me encourage someone and have their back. Drop down to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. So do not throw away your confidence for it will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he promised. But my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back, but we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Don't throw away your confidence. You're not trash. We're called to persevere. Why? Because we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Now, let me be vulnerable, vulnerable with you because this happened to me. And it's a real-time thing that happened to me. I'm not talking 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago. I'm talking two weeks ago, and I'm not talking about the kid that I almost drop kicked. But I thought, oh, man, I've got this opportunity to speak at CMN. It's absolutely phenomenal. Thank you, Lord. And I began to admire some of the other communicators because I've drawn the circles, and I've prayed inside of them. Because I've chased the line and I've realized that if my dream doesn't scare me, then it's not big enough. And then I realized, y'all, I ain't Mark Batterson. Let me tell you what happened in real time. I watched the clip on CMN uh, inviting people to come to conference. The very next one that I saw was Mark Batterson. And guess what happened? Admiration turned to a lack of self-confidence. Why? Because of comparison. And then I was like, Alice in Wonderland, let's see how deep this rabbit hole really goes. And I began to think to myself, I said, I said, Zach, well, well, listen, you didn't, you didn't start break 200 like Mike Santiago. I don't have a church like Travis Jones. I didn't write a, a book like Jason Patterson. I don't have the skill set that John D- Jay does. I don't command a room like Aaron Burke. Yo, I ain't Cody Cochran. That joker can run 10 miles, record himself, hear something from heaven, not break a sweat and not run out of breath. And then what does he do? He goes, ropes cattle. He wears whatever he wants to and actually makes it look good. (laughs) And then the the next clip, it was a guy, his name's Kyle. I guess you say his last name, Bethke, because I don't even know this dude. And here I am watching this clip on Instagram and he used this illustration with draft horses. And I, I, again, I don't know him and I'm comparing my illustration to his illustration. Feeling like I'm less than because I'm talking about a kid movie and he's talking about draft horses. Admiration turned to comparison and comparison turned to a lack of self-confidence. And that's how the enemy works. That, that's what he does. Listen, he's after our life. He's after it. And to get our life, he wants our identity. And to get our identity, he wants our thoughts. And to get our thoughts, he uses words. And then I find myself hoping that one of these guys that I just mentioned would tell me, good job, give me an attaboy, give me a pat on the back, as as if in my finite mind, their words will affirm my call, as if the way that God designed me and his words aren't good enough for my life. You talk about battling the enemy between your own two ears. Now listen, some of y'all, you've been halfway listening to me because the first thing that I said was there were four words that changed the course of human history. And we see it in Genesis chapter three. The devil makes his way over to Eve and he, he whispers those four words, did God really say? Did God really say that you should sell it all and parachute in? Did God really say that you should be a pastor? Did God really say that you should serve on the team and serve the pastor that you're serving right now? Did God really say that you should be here at this conference? Admiration turns to comparison. Comparison turns to a lack of self-confidence because we allow the devil to whisper those four words. Did God really say? Did God really say? We live our lives as if we're trash. Your words matter. What my Bible teaches me is that words formed worlds, words formed identity. In the beginning, God said, and it was. I've got one point for you. Stop thinking to yourself and speak to yourself because your words 
matter. Forky had to change his words and that changed his identity. My Bible tells me that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Your words matter. You're not trash. You're not behind. You're on time. You're not less than. You are who God called you to be. Don't let admiration turn to comparison and comparison to turn to a lack of self-confidence. Why? Because the Bible tells me not to throw away my confidence. I don't belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed. I belong to those who have faith and are saved.